that stop these people from exploding up to their feet. All right. So the first one we're going to learn is a double knee pinch. Okay. So on this one, uh, Jess is going to be exploding his feet. Show us how explosive you are. How explosive. <laughs> Good. So what happens is, even if I have good forward pressure and I try to put weight on his hand, uh, it, it's sometimes hard to keep people from getting to their feet. All right. So let's see. Sorry. Let's see how good you are. I thought I was going to have to cheat. You know, get that. So it's hard to keep Jesse from getting up. So quick. All right. So what I'm going to do is I know that this is the person who keeps getting to their feet. All right. So I'm going to cheat on my lining up. Normally I'm a little more off to the left side. I'm going to cheat a little bit behind him. All right. So what I'm going to do is off the whistle, my knee is already going to be right outside his foot. My other knee is going to go outside this foot. And I'm just going to sit on his feet and pinch his ankles together with my knees. All right, so when Jesse tries to explode to his feet, that's what happens. You've got to really explode this time. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do or not. So they, I think they all think that you were just faking. But this move hurts your feet, just to let everyone know. If your partner's doing it right, it doesn't feel good for the bottom guy. So, like, that's what I was anticipating. Right. But you're also not exaggerating. Like one, no. once I sit on your feet, you're either going to go here and get extended, or you feel it and you kind of like stop. Yeah. All right. So explode your feet. Here. Okay. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you feel. You see how his hands came up. Or he tried to come up, and then once he was stuck, his hands went back down. When his hands are coming back down, that's when I'm going to change my pressure to forward and go to like my spiral or my chop, all right? So we try to do this in like super slow motion. I pinch down, he comes up, and as he's going back down, I'm gonna chop forward over that hand as he's putting his weight back down, okay? So off the whistle, partner's gonna try to explode to their feet, okay? And listen. The first few times you do this, your partner should get to their feet a couple times because you're not going to be very good at it. Okay? And if they're not, then tell your partner, hey, I need you to try harder. Okay? Get up to your feet. Go off the whistle. Boom. Bitch. As his hands are going back down, chopping to my cross fist. Knee in the butt. <laughs> I'm flat. Get him up guy. Everybody got it? Double knee pinch on the ankles. Okay? You can also go to a spiral or a five, double thigh pry two from here. So off the whistle, I can pinch. Now I can go here. I can pinch. I can go spiral. Then you're in. Yeah, we're just going about it in a different way. Okay. So for me, I'll tell you this is this was a this was a game changer in the first move for me on top because uh, being short every now and then at 141. I would get somebody that was like kind of pretty late. And what happens is, you guys ever learned how to like arch your back or turtle shell your back on bottom when you do that? Where you get on your baby kit, try to have a back call? Yeah. Well, what would happen is, if I wrestled like a 141 pounder that had four inches on me, and then they do that, then what, I always had a hard time getting set where I could put any weight on top of them. It was really hard to get my weight up and on them to put the weight on their hands. Before they got their hands up to seal out by hand control, I start coming to the feet. So I had a really hard time with big guys like that, tall guys like that. So I learned this uh, first move that I'm about to show you, and it, it uh, definitely helped me a lot. I shut down people's first moves that, that I found to be tall, where I was having a hard time getting my weight up on them to drive the weight over the hand. Okay? So on this one, I'm going to cheat as well, because I already know that I'm going to do this as my first move. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to line up a little further down his back than I normally would. Okay, so normally if I was going to try to get weight on the hand, I'd be up a little taller up here, trying to get over this hump in his back and get his weight on his hand. On this one, I'm going to line up a little further back. Okay, and what I'm going to do is off the whistle, I'm going to drop my ear, the ear that's not on his back. All right, so if I line up on the left side, my left ear's on the back, 
I'm going to drop my right ear next to his hip. Here. I'm going to switch my knees, and I'm going to go to this ankle ride, but I'm not lifting and driving forward. I'm sinking my shoulder and my arm down through his hips and onto his feet. Okay? So on this one, when I change my knee over, my head drops, I'm going here. Alright, so if he tries to step up or come up, all of his weight is being pulled back down through his hips, but I'm not sucking him back, I'm not pulling him to his butt. Alright, so if Jesse tries to explode up to his feet, you want here. Okay, now, same thing as before. Once you stop that first move, you stop a lot of momentum, then you can come up and work your chops. Okay, but it's a quick rotate of changing knees and feet. So my right foot is up, my left knee's down, my right knee rotates down, my left knee rotates up here, but I'm dropping down here, and I'm sagging my shoulder and my arm down through the hips, heavy on through his hips and down into his feet. That makes sense? So if he tries to like step up, so if he does a stand up off the whistle, here, jump that way. Okay, we're hitting the knees, my head changes over, and I'm going to sag back here. Okay, another way you can finish this, depending on how they come up, like if he steps this leg up, start to drink here. Then, uh, to the far knee, far angle. Make sense? Work breakdowns for that. One, two.